Hi, this is Sahana. In this video, we are going to understand one more important topic that is routing in ASP.NET Core Web API. This is our ASP.NET Core Web API. This Web API has only one controller that is to root controller and this controller has few action methods. I will quickly run this Web API and show you different endpoints of this Web API. This is the Swagger UI and this endpoint and this Web API exposes three endpoints. One is this get all endpoint and this get to do item by ID endpoint. Other one is create to do item. Routing in ASP.NET Core Web API is a mechanism that matches an HTTP request to a particular action method of a controller. Here we have three endpoints. I will click on this get all endpoint and I will try it out and I will execute this. See, here we have a result. Now, the mechanism that decides which action method is going to handle this request is called as routing. When we start learning this ASP.NET Core routing, we come across different terms like routing middleware. Then, then we hear a lot about route template. There is something called as attribute routing and there is something called as conventional routing. Let's understand one by one so that we will get a clear understanding of what is routing and how these terms are related to routing concept. Routing middleware matches the incoming URL to the right controller and action method. In ASP.NET Core, we have something called as Request Processing Pipeline. This pipeline handles HTTP requests and generates appropriate HTTP responses. Each and every request and response have, has to go through this pipeline. Request Processing Pipeline is composed of a series of middleware components. Middleware components can perform various tasks. There will be several middleware components in the request processing pipeline. Each middleware component can either handle the request or it can pass it on to the next middleware in the pipeline. Middleware components can perform various tasks such as authentication, logging, error handling and routing. For each of the job, we have to add specific middleware to the request processing pipeline. Thus, routing middleware is one such middleware that we have to add to this request processing pipeline to handle the routing. To enable routing, we must call app.use routing method and app.map controllers method in the startup file. They will add necessary middleware components to the request processing pipeline. In ASP.NET Core 8.0, program.cs file is the startup file. So, if you look at this main method, we have, see, here we have this uh, builder. We are creating this application builder. Then, we are adding necessary services to the dependency injection container. As this is, as we have used template to create our web API, these methods are already present in our application. And this line will build the application then see from here onwards we are configuring the request processing pipeline see here uh, this is for swagger see this is one method see this extension method adds necessary middleware which redirects http requests to https then we have one more middleware see this will add one more middleware this is that is authorization middleware again this is extension method see the same way here we have this map controllers method this method adds endpoints for controller actions to the i endpoint route builder without specifying any routes so this is one necessary method that we have to add because we are working with asp.net core web api this is not web application we have to how this method to enable routing in our application and same way we have mentioned we need to add one more middleware that is app dot use routing see documentation for this method says again this is extension method this adds endpoint routing middleware to the specified i application builder but one more thing, 
So, we need not add this method. The reason is, this information is from MSTN. This clearly sees routing is configured using use routing and use endpoints middleware. So, this says to use controllers, we have to call map controllers method. Because, see, if you have noticed, we are calling this method because as this is web API application, we are going to implement attribute routing. If you are working with web application instead of web API, then you have to call map controller route or map area controller route methods. And it clearly says apps typically don't need to call use routing or use endpoints because middleware pipeline wraps necessary middlewares that are required to enable routing in the application. We only have to add the method whether we are going to implement attribute routing or whether we are going to implement conventional routing. Based on our choice, we have to add a map controllers method or map controller route method. This way, by calling this map controllers, we have told the framework that we want to enable attribute routing in our application. So, the first step to configure middleware is done. See, this one is already present in my application. Again, I'm telling I have used web API template to create this web API. That is the reason I have all the necessary methods. If you have chosen empty project to create your web API, you have to add this method in the program.cs file. ASP.NET Core supports two types of routing. One is attribute routing. Other one is conventional routing. In case of attribute routing, routes are directly defined on the controller actions using attributes. This type of routing is used with REST APIs. Other type of routing is conventional routing. In conventional routing, routes are defined in the centralized location. This is typically used with controllers with views. In this session, we are going to focus more on attribute routing as this is Web API. Attribute routing uses attributes to define routes directly on the controllers and action methods. We have it already. I will remove this. See, in attribute routing, to do controller is our controller. We want to define route on this controller. Now we have to use this route attribute. See, this is the attribute that we have to use. After this, now we can specify the route. I will name it as this is going to be API slash, then it's going to be controller. Here route is the attribute and this is the route template. Route templates define the structure of the URL patterns. Here this API string will be part of the URL and this is a placeholder. This value will be replaced by the actual controller's name. In this case here this to do is the controller name and this will be replaced by this. Now let's run this application. See, these are the three endpoints and all the three endpoints have same name, API slash to do. This is because we have defined route only on the controller. If we want, we can specify route on the action method too. In different ways, we can define routes. Here we have defined route on this controller. Let's use this route attribute on this action method. So I'm making it route and uh, the value that I am using here for this route is get all to do items. We can identify this endpoint by API slash to do slash get all to do items. Let's try it out. See, this will get all the to do items. See, this is one way. Instead of specifically using this route attribute, we can write it like this also. See here we have this HTTP GET attribute. Along with if I specify like GET ALL, this is one more option to define route for each endpoint. Let's understand this with one more example. Here we have one more action method, GET TO DO ITEM BY ID. This one has this placeholder for this ID. If we want to define route on this, now along with this, we can specify it like Now, 
along with this placeholder, we can specify the route also. See? This one, get to do item by ID, slash. Now we can pass the ID. Let's test it out. I'll pass one. Execute. See? This is another way to define route. Okay, now I'll show you one more way. See, on this controller, along with this placeholder for controller, if we specify placeholder for action method this route will take name of the action method along with the name of the controller let's try it out see this one looks like api slash to do slash get all slash get on why let's examine this see because see api slash name of the controller and name of the action method this is the root we have specified on this controller okay then on top of this action method along with this http get attribute we have specified one more name for this route so it is taking this one if we remove this one okay if we remove this one it will be like See, API slash to do slash get all. Here, get all is the name of the action method. Same goes here. API slash to do slash get to do item by ID. Then again, get to do item by ID. Then the placeholder. Again, this is because we have done the same thing. What we have seen is attribute routing. In case of attribute routing, we have an option to define routes on controllers as well as action methods. In case of conventional routing, we don't define routes or we don't use route attribute to define routes on this controller or action method. It will be simple controller and action method. Instead, in program.cs file, here we are using this map controller. Without, like, instead of using map controllers, we can use map controller route method. Then there we have an option to specify the default there we define the pattern of the route and that pattern will be used for routing the controllers and actions here is an example of how to define conventional route map controller route method will be used and uh, in and then pattern for the route will be defined and this will be in the program.cs file mostly conventional routing is used in web applications web apis use attribute routing just to summarize our today's session, we have covered different topics like routing middleware and how to define route templates, what are the different types of routing, how to define attribute routing. So I hope the session was useful. There is a lot more to learn. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.